Hello friends, welcome to that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel, and I was so surprised how many people wanted to know about how to can spinach. I think it's one of those things that I just take for granted because it's seriously the simplest thing that you can do. Really canning just any direct vegetables pretty darn easy. Um, spinach is one of those though, like no snapping, no nothing. It's like really easy, but I just went and picked this big old bowl of spinach. It's the last of our spinach and it is red Malabar spinach. Not your standard ordinary garden variety spinach there. And let me just tell you about Malabar spinach for a minute. So I struggled for years growing spinach in my garden because Michigan springs are like that. Sometimes it feels like it lasts two weeks and we go straight from winter into summer. And the first thing that happens is your spinach bolts on you before you even get a harvest. I learned with red Malabar spinach, which is a tropical vining variety. It'll grow really tall and grow on a trellis beautifully. The entire plant is edible, but it loves the heat, loves the heat. So as this fall happened and the coolness came, the my Malabar spinach started to suffer, so I needed to go out there and harvest the rest of it. And surprisingly, how much spinach it takes to preserve anything worth preserving when it comes to canning, it takes a lot of spinach. I'm hoping for four quarts or four pints out of that bowl. We'll see if we make it that far. So I've got some water heating up behind me. All you need to do is bring that to a boil. I'll bring you down when it's time to blanch it and then we'll get to can in it. Alrighty, my water is boiling. I'm just going to dump them all in at once. You can certainly work this in batches, but I'm just not a patient person. So we're going to, um, ooh, don't spill. Blanch these for three to five minutes, just until wilted, and then we will pack our jars. ready to peck them. See how this goes. Never works well. I never have the right size tool. But you could, when this comes out, you could totally chop this too. Um, and, you know, if you wanted it sliced and however you want to can it. I'm just canning it whole leaves because I'll just cut it or tear it as I want to when, as it comes out of the jar. And we're going to an inch of headspace. Um, and for reference, this is always in the U, um, NCHPP, I don't know, whatever that organization is, or Ball Preserving Book. You're never gonna find it as spinach, it's just called canning leafy greens. So what I'm doing here today applies to any greens you wanna can. If it's kale greens, broccoli leaves, cabbage leaves, um, I've done Brussels sprout leaves before. So I'm not overly packing it. I'm just filling my jars up to just below the neck. And we'll move on to the next one. I did go ahead and start my canner water behind me so that's getting heated up because this is considered hot packing. We will, we're packing hot food into hot jars. I'll be adding hot water to this. Um, so you want a hot canner for all this to go in. I would show you real quick the color of the water from that red Malabar spinach. It's kind of, ooh, let's see if I can get it up there. Pinky purple. Two, four, six, seven pints. Not bad. And they are pretty, pretty well filled. So I'm going to, I just have hot water that I was heating on the stove while the spinach blanched. I'm gonna to be topping off the jars with that. 
We will wipe our rims with some vinegar just to clean off any debris that might have happened while I was messily filling them. Put our lids on and can it. Okay, so you do want to debubble it. I love using a chopstick. That's my favorite debubbler tool. So I go around the edges, down the center, wiggle it around a little bit, get all those bubbles out. All right, and then if there's any more headspace that you need to top off with the water, you can. So just a little bit in that one. And there we go. How about that? Wasn't that simple? Like really, really simple. Now you can totally jazz up your greens, whether, no matter what this is. I know I'm doing a video on canning spinach greens, but when I make my mixed Southern style collard greens, I don't use collards. I use my leftover broccoli and our, you know, the side leaves from broccoli plants, cabbage plants, Brussels sprout plants, throw in some kale in there, just do a real good variety of mixed greens. And I tell you what, to me, it's a thousand times better than just collards. But I will um, cook that with, um, uh, hmm, ham hock, that's the word, and throw in some hot sauce and salt and pepper and all kinds of yumminess. And I have a video on that if you're interested. Um, but even right now, you could just simply just salt and pepper it, add garlic, um, whatever your family likes. But we're just going to do it plain because I want to keep it super versatile so I can use it for anything. And I know a lot of you are probably wondering, but how does it taste? And you're in luck because I've already canned some of this and I've already eaten a jar. And I did a taste test in a video, so I'll throw that in here. But I should try this before I cook it, just so I know what it tastes like right out of the can. And I'll just be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of canned spinach, but I like it for the purposes of spinach pie. Mm, tastes like canned spinach. Still has a pretty decent chew to it. What I was worried about was like, everyone kept saying it was slimy. And I think it must be a texture thing that certain people are sensitive to. And honestly, it tastes just like spinach you would buy from the store canned. Um, it's got a little bit more of a chew, the Malabar spinach does, than um, uh, you know your typical standard spinach. But we like that. It's more meaty, and you can it's more enjoyable. Um, so I'm just putting my rings on finger tight. We're gonna get these in the canner pints for 70 minutes. If you happen to have a glorious load of spinach and you can can spinach in quarts, I'm so proud of you, but you would can that for 90 minutes. Okay, now that my lid is on, I'm just gonna wait for a solid vent to come out once it starts venting, which is when steam, you can visibly hear and see the steam escaping. We will start a timer for 10 minutes. Then I will put my weight on. For my elevation, I need to bring it up to 10 pounds of pressure. And then we start our timer for 70 minutes. <laughs> 